Hello, and welcome to another book review. And today, I want to talk to you about Richard Lehman's Funland. Now, this is the hardcover edition that I had purchased. It's the special definitive edition that Dark Regions Press uh, put out several years back, uh, which is the first hardcover edition, but you can always find it as a used paperback, uh, which would be much more affordable than this edition. Uh, this was the second of three special definitive editions that Dark Regions Press did. Uh, they started with Night Show, they did Funland, and they did Midnight's Lair. Uh, I did not buy Midnight's Lair. I did buy and review Night Show, and I was not a fan of that one. But I figured I wanted to give him another shot. Uh, I mean, I've heard phenomenal things. I've got other layman titles to read as well. But I figured let's start with some of the Dark Regions Press titles. Uh, so, right off the bat, I will say, if you have watched my review for Night Show, I did not like Night Show. I thought Night Show was kind of a mess. It was just... It, like, production was a mess in terms of, like, typos and spelling errors, which for a definitive edition isn't the best thing. Uh, so right off the bat, I will say, uh, Funland, a much better read. Although it did, you know, certainly have its issues. Uh, so if you're not familiar with the story of Funland, it takes place in Belita, fictional Belita Bay, California. Uh, the titular Funland is a kind of run-down uh, carnival where the rides aren't really... Uh, doing much anymore. It's got like a shut down uh, fun house, uh, but the House of Freaks is still open. The boardwalk is still open. You got the, you know, Ferris wheel and uh, various rides. Uh, but what it does also have is a major homeless problem. Yeah, uh, you can see right here in the back cover, you got a, with Malcolm McClinton's artwork, all sorts of homeless individuals. Um, even that dude, look at that dude over there. And that, that's not a homeless dude, that's Richard Lehman. Uh, well, uh, Bolita Bay is referring to them as trolls. You know, like trolls living under the bridge demanding tolls. Uh, uh, yeah, I would put a quote from, you know, the troll toll from, it's always sunny here, but I don't think it'd be appropriate. Anyways, uh, the, the city of Bolita Bay has issues with these trolls. They're, you know, constantly panhandling and demanding money. And so some of the residents, uh, a group of teenagers have become trollers where they've taken to the boardwalk after dark and they've decided to basically beat the hell out of these trolls and send them on their way. It's actually inspired by a, uh, this is what I found out in the background information, it's actually inspired by real events. Uh, Richard Lehman and his family were in, where's like Pasadena? I don't actually, I don't recall where he was. Uh, it was in his notes in the back talking about how he was witnessing, uh, you know, some panhandling uh, homeless people. And he had read stories of some teenagers kicking the crap out of these homeless people and bringing them to the outskirts of town. And that's all explained within the supplemental material. And that is where I find that the special uh, definitive edition really shines, is supplemental material. Uh, this was signed, not by Richard Lehman, who passed... Uh, years back prior to this, uh, nearly 20 years before this was published, I believe. Uh, but it was signed by Brian Keene, who did the afterword, by Jack Ketchum, uh, who did the foreword and introduction, uh, who has since also passed. Um, but, you know, the supplemental materials are really good. Uh, you have Finding Layman, the introduction by Jack Ketchum, which is just very uh, fun. Uh, it's, re it's a reprint. This was originally published back in 2001. Uh, which talks about, you know, how their paths cross. Then you get into the novel proper, which, uh, there we go, yep, occurred in various California communities. Trolling, Belita Bay, and Funland, however, are fictitious. Uh, and you get to the novel proper, which is 450 pages, uh, which I'll get to in just a second. And then you get a very good amount of supplemental material in the back. I mean, starting with Brian Keene's afterward, where he's talking about revisiting Funland. And then you actually have quite a bit of like timeline and behind the scenes. Well, there's the original paperback cover. There we go. Then we have a bunch of notes from Richard Lehman. Uh, thankfully, they're not all handwritten. Only the first page is handwritten. The rest are all kind of transcribed and typed out. And it's actually really fun reading his notes on it. Like he's almost having conversations with himself, uh, especially in the early stages where he's like, hey, this will be a good idea. And then like that sentence ends and he says, no, bad idea. It's, it's very fun to read. Anyways, that's not anything about the novel proper. Uh, the novel proper, uh, all 450 pages of it, uh, it's all right. I mean, it's, 
the characters, yeah, you got a mixed bag. Some good, some bad. Uh, the main characters, I would say you have uh, Robin, who is not necessarily, well, she's homeless, but not to the same degree as the trolls that she encounters. Uh, she's kind of, you know, getting by, playing banjo. And uh, you have her storyline, where she's just trying to get by and her adventures here in Belita Bay. You have the storyline of Jeremy, who's a new kid in town, uh, who ends up being just a despicable character. He, I mean, I know I've heard that a lot of Richard Lehman's characters, particularly teenagers, are very libido-driven. You know, they, uh, they're very much just doing whatever they can for some sex, and Jeremy is one such character. He, uh, he, has, no, he has no scruples against, you know, being a total dick. And he's basically just a uh, on his quest to get laid, uh, being as terrible of a character as he can be. Uh, there are the two cops, the boardwalk cops, uh, who are trying to kind of make, bring security to the boardwalk while also trying to solve a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of trolling. There's a little bit of d some disappearances that go along with it. You know, it's it doesn't really pick sides in the ordeal. It kind of depicts the trollers, the teenagers, as being kind of despicable teenagers. And you're like, wow, you feel bad for these these trolls, these homeless people. But then it also depicts a small fraction of these homeless people as being just pure evil. And uh, so you're like, okay, yeah, they're, they're both bad. They both have, uh, they're bad seeds. Uh, so Michael, Michael, Malcolm, Malcolm McClinton. I don't, I don't want to call him Michael. Malcolm McClinton, who oddly didn't sign this. Uh, him and Kelly Lehman both signed Night Show, but only the introductory and uh, afterward authors signed this one. But anyways, his artwork is featured throughout. Uh, he did the artwork for Funland, and I believe he did the artwork for Midnight Lair as well. I, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent to his artwork. Uh, there was some artwork in uh, Night Show, where I said, well, he kind of diverges from, you know, what's going on. So there's just minor details of appearances of characters. He kind of does that here as well, uh, which is just a minor complaint. I mean, you know, uh, these teenagers seem far too old, being one of them. You know, they, they, they look like just like short adults. But anyways, uh, his artwork's kind of featured throughout in color on the cover, black and white, uh, throughout the novel. It's not bad. It's certainly not bad. I mean, like I said, some of the characters are depicted slightly different than how they're described in the text, but that's not going to be the uh, the worst criticism. I mean, it's still depicting scenes um, from the novel. But uh, anyways, you know, some stuff goes wrong with some of the trolling. Some characters, uh, some trolls die, as, you know, this character is not, in fact, Peter Pan. He is not doing too hot. And... I will say that 450 pages is a lot for the story here. I mean, this could honestly have been 200 pages shorter and been significantly improved by it. A lot of it is very slow. I mean, it, I, I guess you would call it character-driven, except the characters aren't that good to drive it. Uh, you know, you, you just you kind of get sick of Jeremy's character, or Duke, as he's called amongst his friends. Uh, there's a picture in the back here that uh, I don't want to show you right away. I, I mean, I don't know what the hell's going on with that dude's face. He's got veins bulging out of his neck, looking like a very, very scared Jeff Goldblum. Um, I, there's a picture in the back that I don't want to show immediately. There it is. I don't want to show you immediately because it is kind of a spoiler of something that is encountered, even though that spoiler is actually presented on the cover, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, the last 100 pages or so have a complete turn uh, where you start getting a lot bloodier, a lot more violent. Uh, so everything up to that point is kind of tame. It's slower. I mean, yeah, the, the trollers are having their fun at night and you have some very despicable actions and it's kind of going along at, I, I don't want to say a snail's pace, but it, it, it drags for a couple hundred pages, much like how this review is probably dragging for a couple minutes, but, you know, we're going we're gonna to go on by that. Uh, the last hundred pages, significantly better. Uh, it's more of what I was expecting from Richard Lehman Reed. Uh, I don't know if that necessarily makes up for the slowness of the previous 
several hundred pages. But uh, it was, if that had not happened, I would have probably disliked this novel. Um, one major criticism, other than the fact that Richard Lehman, being a very horny author, uh, loves the word rump. So, I mean, I've heard that he likes to use the word rump, but he didn't use rump too much in Night Show. Rump is on full force in this novel, uh, which, oh, I forgot to mention, is a nice little facsimile of his signature on the boards there. Uh, so yeah, rumps left, rumps right, rumps center. So much rumps. Um, my only other really cr criticism, other than being maybe a couple hundred pages too long, is that, I mean, maybe in the late 80s, early 90s, homeless people talk like this, but every homeless person, every troll, sounds like a pirate. Maybe it's just me, but they all sound like pirates to me. It's like... Uh, they, they don't say ahoy me matey, but they're like, fancy a, fancy a penny for the troll. You know, like, poor Enoch got taken last night, he did. Like, it's, they all sound like pirates. I'm like, okay, what, what are you doing, man? Um, yeah, I mean, they, the, the very last hundred pages or so, uh, they, they go into the abandoned, they being the trollers, and all the other characters all kind of converge, the storylines all come together. And a lot of them go into the abandoned fun house, and the place just turns into an absolute madhouse. Uh, there are, uh, are significantly more trolls and homeless people in there than should be possible in the town of Belita Bay, but whatever. It turns into a bloody mess. It's a fun read. It's not quite splatterpunk, but you know, if you wanted some good old bloody lame and fun, you know. Get to the last hundred pages and you're good to go. There is one event where, like, everything seems to be kind of grounded in reality. There's not really any, you know, not really any uh, supernatural elements. Uh, but there is something. There is something that happens just out of nowhere at the end that made me go, what the hell is this? And I'm thinking, like, oh, Layman just had no idea how to end this. And he needed to throw, like, something in there to, like, you know add some suspense. But no, like the notes in the back of the book, which are dated, I'm going to keep this page open, but not actually show you the image. I'll show the image in a minute uh, after like a brief kind of slight spoiler warning. Uh, there are notes in the back and the notes are all dated where he says, oh, hey, you know what this novel needs pretty early on before he's actually written it? This thing. And so he throws it in there. So like this was clearly planned, um, but yeah, it just it took me by surprise. Anyways, I, it was all right. I know uh, I've heard, you know, some novels be regarded as Layman's best. This is not necessarily regarded as his best, although Brian Keene does say it's one of his better ones in his afterword, but maybe he's just saying that. Uh, but it was one that I was excited to read. Uh, having read it, it does make me want to read another Richard Layman title. If, if it had been like Night Show, I probably would have been like, well, this is really discouraging me. Uh, so anyways, if you've stuck around for 13 minutes, I'm going to give you a slight spoiler warning right here on what you're about to see, which is a ridiculous image, but it's a ridiculous scene, and I, I'm going to show you, but you know, it, it could be considered a spoiler for something you are going to see, so you have been warned. I'm going to give it to 1340 to actually show it to you. Uh, so 1340 is here. There is in the funhouse... A giant-ass spider, which features Jasper, the patron of the funhouse, riding the spider like a horse, we dual-wielding, you know, guns akimbo, uh, revolvers, wearing his little top hat. That is the most ridiculous thing. Like, where the hell did this come from? I mean, yeah, there was a giant spider in, like, his house of oddities, but it wasn't this large. And then they're in the funhouse, and then, boom, giant kaiju spider with a dude writing it. Like, Jasper's a nasty character. He's like a perv. But he's, like, where the hell did this come from? I mean, I guess it is technically on the cover. Uh, here is the spider on the back on the the, uh, the roller coaster. And he is actually also on the roller coaster in this image because, like I said, McClinton kind of takes his images and goes his own little route with it. But this was so downright random that I actually laughed at it. Like, was this supposed to be scary? I don't know. I mean, it's funny because I was watching Eight-Legged Freaks like literally the night before. I was just flipping through HBO and Eight-Legged Freaks is on and then boom, giant spider comes up in the novel. But hot damn. Um, 
So yeah, Richard Lehman's Funland, I mean, it wasn't bad. It was more uh, significantly more enjoyable than Night Show was, uh, hands down. Uh, it makes me want to read, you know, some more Richard Lehman, because I liked the parts I liked. Uh, and I know this was one of his longest novels, if not his longest, which, you know, is kind of encouraging, because if all of his novels kind of dragged for an extra 200 pages, it would be, it'd be significantly worse. Um, but anyways, uh, Richard Lehman's Funland, I believe... This edition is sold out through Dark Regions Press. Uh, they never did a trade edition of this. They did do a trade edition of Night Show, which surprised me that they never did one for Funland. Uh, but if it is sold out, uh, you can go to the secondary market if you want the special definitive edition. Honestly, you, you're probably just as better off with just the trade edition, um, unless you really want a Jack Ketchum or Brian Keene signature uh, to add to your collection. Uh, the, the introduction and afterward are all right. I would say the notes are really good. They're really fun to read. It was, like I said, very fun to see how the ideas of this novel progressed and it all came together. Um, one thing I will say is that I it, this did take me a while to read. I have actually been like slowly picking my way. Like, right now, it's the very first week of September. Like it's technically the second week now, I guess. But anyways, uh, start of September. I started reading this back in June. Um, like it was just a very slow slog of a read it's particularly like those middle like you know started off strong 300 pages of like really slow slog then it picked back up uh like this I, I was reading this back during the bell's palsy and yeah it was just yeah i finally finished it and i'm like all right we're doing this book review we're just getting it out of the way so anyways check out richard layman's Funland if that sounds uh like an adventure to you if you've already read it tell me what you think in the comments below uh, thank you very much for watching. Plenty of other unboxing videos to hold you over between these review videos, but plenty of review videos as well. So please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you around next time.